The idea of the red-brown alliance has entered the mainstream. There's like articles about it. It's used a lot in regards to Syria and stuff. But the fact of the matter is it just doesn't really practically exist. Outside of like niche online spaces, there's not Feels like a red-brown alliance, nor has there ever been. What there is, is um, a liberal fascist alliance, not a leftist or communist or anarchist fascist alliance, but a liberal fascist alliance that has been very broad and very much real ever since fascism was first spawned really because when it comes down to it liberals are far more concerned with maintaining capitalism than they are anything else and this is why in the modern day many fascists if not most fascists i'm pretty sure most of them have have adopted neoliberal capitalism as a part of their platform they've really changed you know fascism has always been eclectic and really malleable, but um, nowadays they've really adopted neoliberalism ever since at least Pinochet and um, really earlier than that, Franco as well. They've adopted the ever-loving shit out of liberalism. This has endeared them a lot more to liberals. The only time when liberals will oppose these sorts of neoliberal fascists is if there isn't like a realistic leftist who could take power if they're overthrown or beaten or whatever. Generally, they will gleefully ally with them in order to oppose the left. And this is the real color brown alliance. I don't know, you can call it like the yellow brown, which is very good because yellow is like the historical color of liberalism. The blue is like the color of like the US um, Democratic Party. So you can also call it like a blue brown alliance just to oppose the red if you want. But whatever you want to call it, it, it is real, unlike the supposed huge problem of the Red-Brown Alliance. Who supported Pinochet? Liberals. Who supported the fascist dictatorship in Argentina? Liberals. Who supported the fascist dictatorship in Bolivia, in Paraguay, in Brazil? Liberals. Yeah, who supported Franco? Liberals. When it comes down to it, liberals always side with fascists. And a lot of the time they do it gleefully, especially in the modern day. Because the fact of the matter is, for a liberal, living in a fascist society is really not much different than living in a liberal one, other than the keeping up of appearances in the liberal one. You know, they, they still get to keep their parents, their parents' business. They still get to keep all their property. They still get to keep all their wealth. The sort of law and order bullshit that deep down they support is going to, you know, be taken up to 11, but they don't care about that. They don't care about democracy and reality. They don't care about anything. All they care about is the maintenance of capitalism, particularly the free market and sort of neoliberal kind. And they care about the maintenance of their class power. So when it comes down to it, and they have to choose between like, you know, even like a pretty bog standard, boring social democrat or a fascist who will who will maintain the neoliberal world order, the neoliberal order in their country. They're going to go with the fascists every time. And that's, that's what they've done historically. Operation Condor wouldn't have been a thing without the liberals backing it. In fucking Latin America, li liberal is basically just a synonym for right winger. And there's a reason for that, because they are. You know, when people talk about liberals in Latin America, often they're literally talking about like Bolsonaro and Pinochet and, sh and such. People like that. Because that's what liberalism is associated with here. Because liberals have supported fascists so often, so frequently, to the point that they're basically indistinguishable from them. So the next time some fucking liberal talks to you about a red-brown alliance, ask them how their yellow-brown alliance between piss and shit is going. Because that's the alliance that actually exists not the supposedly red-brown one.